Now it's time to talk about magnetic fields. I like this picture of Tesla. He's feeling underappreciated again. So we have uh, magnetic fields and we're going to define the lines that we're going to draw because we're going to learn how to draw magnetic field lines and then we're going to quantify them with some equations. But we define it as a north on a compass, like where it would point. You know what a little compass is? It's usually a little thing that sort of spins around and it depends on the magnetic field and it points somewhere. So if you imagine you had a little compass, uh, don't you uh, see them? Don't they look like this? Like, uh, if nothing else, if you're using even like Google Maps or something like that, even with that, they usually draw it like this right here. You know, and this right here is sort of shaded red. You know, isn't that sort of a little compass like that it's supposed to point north? Uh, in a real life, you know, you might actually have a uh, an actual compass that you carry around. I know when I'm a bit in the woods, for example, we carry around a little compass like this. It's a little thing that's allowed to spin, then it can rotate. It tells you which way is north. Then you can use that to navigate. So if we have a magnet, so let's just say we have a magnet here, uh, we define things as north and south. So conversely, you know with charges, we had a positive and a negative charge. And what's interesting is charges can exist on their own. In other words, you can have a positive charge uh, by itself, or you can have a negative charge by itself. But for some reason, you can't have uh, a north by itself. So there exists a statement that says that there's no magnetic monopoles. It's really interesting. If you have like a compass like north-south and you go and start cutting it, it's still going to be north-south, still north-south. And then to the atom, the moment you cut it, boom, it becomes north-south, north-south. You can't have a north by itself. It's really weird. So imagine you have a bar magnet like this right here. Imagine that I place my little compass right here. Maybe I place it right here. Where would it point? Do you know that a north and a north, they don't like each other. They're going to repel. So it's going to go away from the north. But if I placed a compass right here towards the south, you're going to see that it would actually be attracted to the south. So then I could draw my magnetic field lines. I don't know if you see this, but you can actually go like this. So you can draw them going out like that. And then out like this right here. Like that. And of course you can draw more lines and more lines. You can draw as many as you feel like. I right? go along forever. So it looks kind of like an apple core, I guess, or whatever you want to draw. So it looks like this. This is how the magnetic field lines uh, work. Now, have you ever seen people say that Earth is kind of like this? You can say, yeah, the Earth can be sort of looked at as a bar magnet. So you could say that it's like the Earth has a, uh, this is a very careful thing, watch this carefully. It's technically a south here and a north here. And this is the part that's really weird to people. They say, no, we call it the North Pole. Yeah, 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 we do. It's technically then a magnetic south. Because don't we agree that a uh, north on a compass would never point towards a north? A north you know, is away from a north. So watch carefully. This is actually the Earth. If we draw the Earth like this, it's just a minor little thing, but uh, technically, you know, the lines should go like this. This is actually how it looks on Earth. We still call this the North Pole because it is the direction that north would point, but it's technically a magnetic south. Some people get really bothered by that, so don't worry too much. If that really makes you upset, don't worry. You can say fine. It's still a north. Oh, wait a second. I drew one of my arrows wrong, didn't I? Look at this. This isn't this way. That one should be that way. I just want to make sure my drawing looks okay, right? I don't want to give you the wrong information. There we go. So this is how it's drawn. And I hope you'll pardon the dumb pun here, but electric and magnetic fields, they go hand in hand. Get it? Uh, because actually when you have one, you have the other. They're related. In the past, we used to think they were separate fundamental forces, electricity and magnetism. And now, because they're so closely related, we know we call them electromagnetism for a reason. So this is why. First of all, let's uh, do wire with a current. So what we do is we define, uh, there's left-hand rule, that's what LHR stands for, not London Heathrow as the airport, but uh, left-hand rule or right-hand rule. And this is because it depends on if you're considering what we call a conventional current or electron flow current. And the IB has decided that uh, we should have a current such that we should always use right hand rules. So because of that, good news, we will ignore a left hand rule current for this. So there will be no left hand rule current for a wire with a current. And normally the way we do this, we normally use our thumb like this. So it's going to be a little bit hard for me to show you, but watch me. So you can see we actually use our thumb like this right here. Can you see like the way my hand is like this? So this is how I'm going to attempt to draw this exact thing. Uh, you're going to see I am not an artist and no one has ever claimed that I or uh, accused me of, sh you know, that I should be an artist. That's because I'm a really, really, well, you'll see it. So hopefully you'll see that this is sort of, that's supposed to be a hand. I don't know what happened to that thumb, but I'm trying to draw a hand with fingernails. I'm trying to draw, you know, you can see the fingernails on my hand. You know, if I'm drawing it like this, you can see them. So this is what I'm trying to draw here. 
So now what I'm going to say then is this. I'm going to say, all right, then the fingers, uh, so the thumb, I'm going to say, thumb is going to be the current. That's the thing. So my thumb is the direction of the current. And my fingers, they're going to curl. You notice, I mean, your fingers, if you look at them, they curl in a certain direction. So because of that, I'm going to say it, uh, maybe I'll put it in green, maybe. I'll say, I'm trying to loop it like this. Can you see the fingers that sort of curl around like that? I'll say fingers. Those are going to be in the direction of the magnetic field. And what is the magnetic field? We call that B. Right? That's in Tesla. And current, let's do it uh, with a proper notation here. So we'll do current I, which is measured in amperes. Ampere. There we go. That's how we use it. So it sounds really easy, right? And I think it kind of is. So let's see if we can do an example. So here you have a wire with a current directed out of the page. Now here's the problem with these hand rules. Um, you're trying to draw something in three dimension, and yet you have a two-dimensional sort of plane, right? Like your screen or your piece of paper. So you have to imagine that we have directions like up, we have uh, left, right, and we have down, but we also have out of the page, like stabbing you in the face, and we have into the page. Uh, so that's sort of how it works. So you have to sort of try to consider this. So if it's out of the page, into the page, or up, down, left, right. So the way that we normally draw by convention, things being out of the page, this is supposed to be in three dimensions. It's supposed to be stabbing you in the face here. Can you see this uh, thing? We normally draw it with a dot. That's because if you imagine like an arrow being fired at your face, you're like, what part would sort of stab you? It would be the point of the arrow, wouldn't it? So we draw that. If something was going away from you, uh, we would draw with a cross, even though I know that arrows are usually not you know, the fletching on the arrow is usually not a cross. It's usually like a triangle, isn't it? But it doesn't matter, right? So just imagine that's the part you'd see going away from you. So that's the notation we use. So in this case, we have a wire. The current is directed out of the page, which means it's coming right out of the page, right into your face. Um, so what you should do then is draw the magnetic field lines around the wire. So this is going to be hard. So I want you to take your hand, your right hand, and you're going to like this right here, and you're going to put your thumb out of the page. So in this case, can you see, like for me, for example, if the, the page for me is the screen, you can't see it, but the screen, which means to me, I'm going to have my thumb pointed towards my face, like, you know, like that. Can you see which way your fingers then curl? Can you see that they curl? In my case, uh, that would be counterclockwise. So in this case, just be really, really careful whether you try it yourself. Okay, so put your fingers, um, so have your thumb right now on the screen right here, have your thumb sticking out of the page, right into your face, and hopefully you'll see that your fingers curl in this direction. Do you see how your fingers sort of curl in that direction? And this is how you can actually draw then the magnetic field lines. So this right here, this would be magnetic field lines. They would go like this. Let's try another example. You have a wire with current. This time the current is directed into the page. Do you see that's why I drew this X here? In which direction will a compass point at eight? At A, I mean. So let's, again, use our right hand rule. So here we go. I take my trusty right hand. I'm going to this time, I'm going to put my thumb into the page. Can you do that? So take your thumb, point it into the page right now, because that's what this arrow shows you, into the page. Do you notice which way your fingers curl? If I do like this here, my fingers curl that way. So to me, that's counterclockwise. Uh, sorry, clockwise. So see if that works for you. You should have something like this. This should be curling that direction. So I can draw different field lines like this right here, right? This is B. So be very careful. Watch this. How do I figure out what happens at A? Look at this. What if I draw a field line that just, just passes through A? Which way is it pointing? Can you see which way it's pointing? The magnetic field lines through A. Can you see they're going to the left? If that's the case, then I can state without any doubt then that that is the way a compass would point. Because don't we draw the magnetic field lines, don't we define them as the direction that a compass would point? That's why we do this. It's awesome. So that's how we can figure this out. Had the compass been over here, let's say at this point right here, the compass would point up. Can you see that's the way these are going? Had I put it right here, the compass would point down. Over at the top here, the compass would point to the right. So it all depends on which uh, different directions, but that would be the case here. That's hand rule number one. So we draw like this. Thumb is the current, fingers are the magnetic field. Now, let's do rule number two, which is with a solenoid. Solenoid is just a coil of wire. So um, 
Like we're gonna do an example, like look at the next things here. We're gonna have a thing right here, like how do magnets work? Aliens. Uh, we're gonna have a solenoid, so some sort of piece of metal with some wire coiled around it. So in this case right here, it's a coil of wire. And again, we don't have a left hand rule. We're just gonna have a right hand rule. That's good news. Now I'm going to attempt to draw my thumb like this, sorry, my finger like this, or my hand, I mean like this. So can you see, I see my thumb, but I don't see my fingernails. Like to you at least, you can't see my fingernails. So I'm going to attempt to draw that right here. I don't know if I can, but let's just see if I can. So I'm gonna to attempt to draw this, so it'll go like, like that, and I guess two, three, four, something like that. Or I can see my nail here. Oh, that's a big thumb I have, but there you go. You get the idea. Here, however, it goes opposite to what the other one did. So where the other example, um, we had the thumb being the current, the fingers are the magnetic field. This time they get reversed. This time the th fingers are the current. So I'm gonna draw them sort of curling. Can you see my fingers? You know, they sort of curl around. Look at my fingers, they're curling around that way. So your fingers are gonna curl around and those are the current, which is I, which is in ampere. So it doesn't help you to calculate the value of the current, but it helps you to calculate the direction, or not calculate, but to figure out, to determine. And your thumb, that is the direction of the magnetic field lines. In other words, it's also the direction that a compass would point because, does that make sense? Like this would become the north. Because if I put a north here, wouldn't a compass want to point away from a north? So that's why it also is where the north is pointed. In this case, you could say that would be north. Let's see if this is gonna help us with our example. So now we have an example that says, which way is north on the electromagnet? Let's just assume the current goes this way, it goes this way around this. Can you see so the current goes up, then down, and then behind this thing, and then around, and then behind it, and around? So in this case right here, that's the solenoid rule. So use your trusty right hand. It's a solenoid, so you know you have to do it. I want you to curl your fingers. Uh, for you, it'll look kind of like this right here, I guess, right? Like this. So curl your fingers going out and behind that object, okay? So I'm gonna do that with me. So I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna curl my fingers behind this. Can you see that if I do that, I end up with, can you see my hand ends up actually pointing like this right here? That's the only way I can do it. So my fingers are curling behind, just like the current goes front and back like this. If I had reversed my hand, in other words, if the hand was a mirror image, it wouldn't work because then the current would be coming from behind and out. Can you see the way it's drawn here? This current going this way means it must go behind it and then forward and behind it and behind it. So that's why I know it for sure has to be oriented this way. So my fingers are the current. So which way is my thumb pointing? To the left, so that's how I know that's a north. That's gonna be a south, therefore. Not so bad, is it?